What is up, YouTube? It's Zach with Veteran Construction. We are in potentially the worst built building in history. Um, but anyway, we are at my flip house. I bought it, so I deserve it, right? And we're getting ready to frame up a bathroom inside of this area. We demoed the old one during the Rona. Oh, yeah. Like Erlacher in his prime. <laughs> uh, and what you could see is I actually removed this window here and put two in. And I've got about 13 inches between the window and that wall. So I've done the same thing to determine where my wall is going to come in. All right, we're going to send it all the way this way. And I went ahead and got everything marked out for you guys. Uh, just because I had a lot of figuring out to do anyway. Whew, it is hot in here. We're sweating like cats giving birth. But um, we got these plates set up for you. I usually kind of just do them as I go. But I thought it'd be kind of cool just to show you guys how it looks. So there we are. Again, this is the, the toilet right here. See where them knees come? Hmm. Oh, perfect. All right, YouTube watchers. Um, we have to fill my pouch with pools for fir first things first. <laughs> oh, almost. Like got almost. Redo. <laughs> Did you see that claw? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bless. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we have to figure out, we put one nailer in here just to kind of catch this wall since it falls in between studs. You can see over here we pulled down some insulation. I'm probably going to re-insulate the whole thing, but we don't feel like getting into that right now. We did the same thing over there. So this is kind of screwed up, but I'm just going to show you guys the height we're working with here. This is what I mean. Our floor is level. Alright, we've got just about 96 inches here. By the time we get all the way to the end, got whacked in the face. Did you get that on camera? Mm -hmm. By the time we get all the way in, we're looking at 94, pretty much on the money. Mm -hmm. So we're losing about two inches here. So I probably would normally balloon frame something like this. I'll do a few of them over here where, you know, like I said, our floor is level. You can see this. So you can see that we rebuilt the floor and it's pretty level. But, uh, Anyway, since this falls in between this cavity here, I'm just going to go ahead and build it up. And it's going to hang up inside of here, but we're doing blown in insulation anyway, so it's not going to really affect anything. And we'll just add backers along the way. I just want to be able to show you guys, you know, how to build a wall without having a bunch of different funky numbers. Okay? So, all right, so we're getting ready to do our uh, layout here. What I always do. I'll take uh, take a nail, usually an eight penny, six, 16, three inches are a little bit aggressive. You know, we're just trying to keep this together. And you just get them nice and flush. Give it a tap, right? And they stay together pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this layout here. All right, so this is the way I originally learned was um, you mark three quarters of an inch shy of 16, right? Because you need this 16 to be your center, right? And a stud is an inch and a half wide. And the reason we want our everything set on 16s is because if you're doing plywood, like on the exterior, you got these lines to go off of usually, helps you nail. And as long as that stud, the center is right here, then we're good, okay? And then also when you're doing drywall, if you know you're hanging eight or 12 foot sheets, then you want it to break evenly on a stud, all right? Because they come in exact sizes. So, like I said, you can mark 15 and a quarter. And then what I used to do, again, this is used to. I've kind of got a bit of a different thing going now. Use whatever, a cap nail, trim nail, whatever. And I would put it there, and I would just hook, and then I could mark 16 from there, right? Because even though I'm hooking the sides, if you go center, right, then that's where the 16 is going to land, right? Right in the center. So if you hook, it's still the same thing. You're still pulling 16 on center. One of my guys didn't understand that last year. All right. So um, now we're going to have a door here, probably here too. So these marks are probably bad. But I just wanted to show you that way. And then the other way would be just to mark the 15 and a quarter, right, 
but do that on every time. Mark three quarters of an inch shy of 16. So you could just go on and mark that three quarters of an inch shy. If you hold your pencil like this, it basically squares them anyway, okay? It's a nice little trick I learned from Matt. And uh, Matt is the guy who built the, um, the dormer, helped me build that dormer over in Valpo. So if you guys haven't checked that video out and you like framing, that's a great video. There's a lot of good info in it. All right, so we're gonna actually do the layout now. So we're gonna have a stud right here, obviously. We gotta have one on the end. And then uh, I happen to have a center marked already for my door, okay? So what I can do is just take my speed square and mark up that center, right? Make a mark on the top. So that's my center. Now I'm doing a, um, a 32 inch door, okay? But the openings on your doors need to be two inches bigger so you can fit the jam, okay? So we're gonna have one right there at 17 and one at 34. Okay, now that gives us room for our jam and everything. So this right here, oh, that nail's getting away. So this right here, if you can look, that's gonna be my cripple. Okay, and we're gonna slide over an inch and a half. Okay, and now this is gonna be my king. Okay, so we're gonna have a king and a cripple. This might help you understand it a little better. Boom. All right, now our header's gonna sit on top of this cripple. All right, so let's go over here to where the other one was. Do the same thing. So we've got cripple and king. All right, so let's keep on going. Now we've got a wall partition here, which is an XBX, right? Stud block stud. So I can go like that. Let's transfer that up. Okay, now this is where this is where our block is going to be, so that this wall can get nailed into this. It's a block, okay. And on each of these sides, a stud. You can't see it. <laughs> you don't need to know who's calling. My, one of my old sergeants, for some reason. All right, so we got stud block stud. Okay, now that's going to catch. Now what this is is, like I said, this gets this will get nailed into here. Right? And then this gives us drywall backer on each side. All right? Now let's continue on. Um, well, we also need to check real quick if, if we have any studs. Usually I'll mark my studs on my top plate. But this is going to be my top plate. So I will keep my studs on the top plate. Let's not forget to do that. Right? Okay. By the way, I'm not like the best at laying out or anything. Okay, I'm just trying to show you the basics. All right. Now, let's see. Yep, that gets us into there. Now we're past this wall partition. We got a stud there. We're gonna need a stud here. Oh, that's not, that's the wrong mark. Remember, like I said, mark, yeah, mark 30 and a quarter. I'm kind of going backwards on this. We've also got one here, but it's not going to work. We won't need it because of this wall partition. We're going to be doing a little bit different. So let me explain that real quick after I square this down. Because this is going to be a common stud in between everything. Can you see good or do you need to stand right mm -hmm. above it or anything? Okay. So we've got this wall partition now. Okay. So let's just mark where these are going to come up. Um, but I don't want to make too dark a marks because I know that this is going to change based on my screwed up situation. Like I said, if everything was an inch big or a foot bigger on each way, we'd be golden. But, uh, so here's what we got here. We've got from wall to wall, we've got 38 inches. Okay. Now I went ahead and marked my 19 at the center. This is the other doorway. Remember? Okay. We're going to come right up it. There's my center. Now what we have to do here is remember we're doing 34 inches because we have a 32 inch door. I got just sweat beating off my face. <laughs> All right, so we've got, we've got our cripple, right? And we've got our king. 
okay? All right, now that covers the, this will, this will have barely enough room for trim. I mean, barely, because we'll, we'll just have to cheat it a little bit inside because like I said, you're gonna have a three quarter inch jam and typically you would put that about a quarter inch in off the jam and only leave a quarter of, the, of an inch showing. But it is two and three eighths and if you look at this number, we're just shy there, but we're actually gonna have drywall so we are going to be short. So what we're going to have to do on that is uh, none of your guys' business, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so don't worry about that. This is a framing video, <laughs> not how to finish video. All right. So we're going to come off of here, and we're going to have three and a half inches for a block. Okay. Now this three and a half inches will give us, what, seven-eighths of an inch right here as a drywall backer because you see where that block that uh, wall partition came in. Okay, so this gives us, we're gonna have a block here again, right? California corner style, right onto this uh, this king stud. What is that noise? I think it's the neighbor scraping with a shovel. It sounded like it was in my soffit. Yeah, it did. Okay. <laughs> I, was, right. I was wondering. So we've got our cripple, our king. We're gonna have a block here. Drywall nailers on both sides. Plenty to nail into on this wall, okay? Um, this would be kind of a pain to get in. Oh no, we'll put it. We'll put the block to our king first, mm -hmm. and then we'll just shoot our cripple in because we can do that anyway. Mm -hmm. So no pain. All right. Now, like I said, I do want to uh, continue on my top plate for the header marks. Oh, I keep marking the wrong damn thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, marking three quarters of an inch shy every time. So we just need this on the top. Okay, this is for above our headers. But there's something there, it's good enough. All right, now we got this other wall partition gonna be coming in. Oops, didn't even do no good with that. Okay. Now I've actually got a, did I, did I make my mark already? Same thing. Yeah, it's right here, sorry. So we've got this cripple, right? Boom. And now there's a little bit of a gap till the wall partition comes in. So we're just gonna do, uh, well, actually, sorry, we still got our king here. Mm -hmm. So now our king, and we're just gonna do the exact same thing, yeah. So, damn it, I don't know where these marks are on here. One, oh, that's one, two, three. That is three and a half right there. Boom, right there where my nail is, what do you know? <laughs> screwing the shit out of me. Dead on. All right, so block block all right now, again we do have to continue our uh, thing for this oh, shit. and that's it okay. boom so now we're ready to get some studs in place and make this happen dude it literally feels like the tent in Afghanistan right now dude this one time in Afghanistan I had a piece of 550 cord and uh, uh, Billy Ray threw it up, and I fucking lassoed it in midair, dude. Caught it like this. I was swinging it around all time. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, like I said, we had about 96 inches here, and I'm just going to continue that across. So, the, what you do with your uh, studs here is you've got 96 inches. We've got a bottom plate and a top plate. So in order to keep it at the height of 96, we need to subtract three inches total because inch and a half on the bottom plate, inch and a half on the top plate. So we're gonna have 93 as our stud length, okay? And kind of the same thing with these cripples. Um, I'm sorry, with these headers. God, it's so hot. Um, if you measure the, we got a 34 inch opening, right? It's always gonna be three inches bigger, okay? Because you've got an inch and a half in here and an inch and a half in here. All right, so 34 inch opening plus three inches is 37 inches for the head. Let's get some studs in place.
Now let me show you guys a good trick on this. So, when dealing with studs above like 90 inches, if you hook your tape about right, about right there, just to the side of center, what you can do, you can take your pencil, if you leave it down a little bit and put it right on it, you can just go boom. 93 inches is what we're going for, right? And look how square that is already. So I won't have to uh, bust out a speed square on this. You know what I mean? Which realistically, if you're looking for better quality, um, you know, and it really does not take much more time to make a mark come through and speed square them all, but this is one of those tricks I learned from Matt a while back. And if you've got somebody to uh, move your tape, like John will do, mm -hmm. then it can go pretty quick. Okay, so he's gonna put it, yep, got right there. I'm gonna mark my 93. Every time I do it, I can put my tape back down and double check it, all right? And if it's a little one way or the other, I can make a mark on it if I really want it. Everyone's been pretty much dead on so far. Okay, and again, they call this rough framing, right? It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, and if you, Notice, if there is a little frown or a smile, uh, you can tell that, um, you can tell where it's going to be and adjust that with your saw. Now, I normally don't cut off a uh, saw table. I just cut off my foot. It's quick. Right now we gotta figure out our cripples. Now, what I like to do for my cripples so I don't screw it up, as I have in the past, is I'll put it like this. Now we've got an we've got an 80 inch door, standard door height. You're gonna want it roughly uh, two inches bigger, okay? So what I'll do is I'll hook this so I don't screw it up. Right? Mm hmm. Now we've got 82 inches. I can mark that square. Now, if I want, I can just pull it and check that number. We've got 80 and a half. Okay. So I guess that could be your standard number if you want. I want to be quick on a speed square, too. The boss don't want you taking all day trying to make it too perfect. It doesn't take long to get it right. I literally had an old man one time snatch a speed square out of my hand and just go like this. Okay, getting all mad, you know? I was like, okay, never been slow on a speed square since. Uh, all right, so let me go ahead and top these. I'm just going to go ahead and turn all these back up. I guess it's time to ignore the heat and ignore the sweat and get that straight pound town, baby. Just do it, man up. So one thing I usually do is you uh, you put this about an eighth of an inch in from the end, maybe even a quarter, and then when you shoot it to the wall, you can beat it back over. It's gonna make it easier to get the uh, to get the wall in place. Okay. Now I'm shooting left-handed right now but that's because I'm in this corner and you always want to start on this side and I happen to have a wall in the way. Now you're going to notice when I'm doing this, how I keep my hands away, that's exactly what you want to do, okay? Now we've got this block, king, and cripple thing going on. Now you got to be really careful with this. One of my workers one time hit a knot, put a nail straight through two of his fingers, curled out, and hand was safe. It looks safe. Keep squeezing that in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Have two blow tubes. 
sure you flatten them. Okay, so we want to make sure this thing's flush. A nice little trick you guys can use, I learned this from uh, my buddy Matt also, is to turn the gun sideways and use your thumb. It really helps with everything. Okay. Now I'm going to shoot this cripple on. So we're going to get this nice enough and flush. We got this king block thing going on again. Yeah. Go ahead and shoot it. We'll worry about which direction in a second. Man, even your bone's getting hot. Now this is just an XBX, so you can do this one like this again, and then we'll show you how to finish it off. So now we gotta flip it this way, do the same thing like this. So, when you nail these together flat, which is weird, this is so far the only cripple I've been able to, <laughs> you want to make sure they're square. These nails are three inches, but they indent into this wood a little bit, so you'll shoot it to the floor if you don't angle it. So you can angle them. I usually just switch it up a little bit. Okay, as you can see, nothing blew out the back. <laughs> I scared the camera, didn't I? Freaking out. Oh, man. oh, what a blow through. Oh, man. I'm the king of that shit today. It's alright, I never claimed to know what I was doing, right? I just got on here and started teaching. <laughs> <laughs> I tell nobody how good I am. <laughs> <laughs> Again, leave this in about a quarter to an eighth. <coughs> These damn drywalls to my gun and everything. <coughs> All right, switch. It's your turn. Mm -hmm. Oh God. I'm so tired of doing all the hard work, John. You freaking do something. Daddy O's gonna sit right here on his chair. Take the bags off first. All right. Wait, we found a piece of wood exactly the length we need here. It's crazy. This is a half inch, well, 7 16 plywood, or OSB, I guess. It's basically the same thing. What we're doing is we're just cutting this um, so that we can sandwich it in between the two uh, two by sixes here. And then what that's gonna do is that's gonna make up the difference for three and a half inches, which is the thickness of this, so that everything floats good, the drywall and all. Might as well trace it for another real quick. <laughs> it is. We got another header over there. You see how it's just shy of all the edges? That's what we want. And then you want to flush these two up with each other. So. I'm about good there. You don't really have to angle these too much because it's three and a half inches. good got you a bit yeah so we're gonna have to uh 
shoot these in a little weird because happen to just have blocks on both sides it makes it kind of tough we'll be able to go underneath here and shoot it in underneath that no problem so for right now we're just going to get this stuff packed um so go ahead just because we're in a screwed up situation and then this one as well it might be good thing the second one shot i don't think the first would have hit nothing <laughs> Okay, he's gonna go ahead and shoot that other one in and I'm gonna show you guys how to get these uh, stud numbers you know, that might be a little tight here let's call them seven and again we got our layout here on the top so we'll actually need four it's usually everybody puts one on each end and then wherever on layout all right so I'm gonna show you guys oh I got a little seat here too Oh, uh, thank God in this heat. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you guys this little trick to mark multiple at once. Um, so I'm just going to mark seven. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hold my tape. Come get close up on that. Uh -huh. About the width of a saw blade, which is a little under an eighth. Okay. And then I'm going to mark, I better hold my tape straight. I'm going to mark seven again. Do the same thing. And this is a crow's foot here. You mark straight and then go like that. Looks like a crow's foot. Now we're going to be running our, pen, our saw blade along that, along the edge of this line. Y'all better not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm up here sweating just to teach you guys something. Or entertain you, one of the two. This may be one of the roughest work days of my life. It is so hot in here. I went bought an AC unit for the window. The window's shit. It's not doing nothing. But anyway, you got enough sense about me to remember to tell you guys we should nail these headers in first. Um, that way you can get good nails in it. And especially because that up there is not going to let us nail this thing. Get it nice and flush.
We got this whole thing secured, except I'm just gonna nail into those rafters. Uh, come on this side. Mm -hmm. I'm about to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> we got everything all flush in here. So, again, you can walk out of the bathroom here and into there. It's too hot, otherwise I'd show you guys how we cut these out here. Really all I do is I uh, put the blade and the sawzall backwards and just use that. It's good for these flush cuts here. And that's all. Uh, I'm just going to shoot these in for you. We've already leveled this here and got it leveled there. <coughs> it's leveled in every which direction already. So we're just going to give these a little bit more to secure it. It feels so good to be done with this. I'm not exaggerating. That was the most miserable I've ever been. Near blackout multiple times. I bought, I went out midday and bought this window unit and it didn't do anything. You know, we've got no insulation up here. You know, these four vents are plenty to vent the attic space, but not this entire upstairs. You know, we've got all center vent there. So, I mean, air's just coming in and not much is getting out. But yeah, I'm not sure... Uh, how much I went into detail over here, but this is going to be our bathroom here. Um, so you guys are going to want to stay tuned and make sure you hit that subscribe button to see how this room comes out. You know, I'm doing a lot of stuff in this flip house, but I think given the amount of time I have and everything, I'm just going to mainly focus on showing you guys this room and I might do updates, you know, on the rest, but I probably won't show too much other than what all we're doing up here. Cause it's got everything, you know, a bathroom, um, you know, all the stuff for a bathroom flooring and everything. So all right, we've got, um, this is going to be a custom poured pan, all tile. We're going to have a bench seat there, a uh, wall niche here for, uh, you know, body wash and things like that. And, you know, shower head over here. And this is my favorite part that I kind of came up with on the fly, and that's these uh, shelves here. You know, we're going to have a double vanity. So she's got plenty of space to put her stuff. He's got plenty of space to put his. That way we can have a big mirror, no medicine cabinet or anything like that. Um, the only thing we are short on is this wall. I don't have I didn't have enough two by fours for that little 42 inch wall. But uh you know that's just gonna cap off the toilet area. And then we're gonna have a sliding door here, barn style. And then uh yeah, you can walk right into your walk-in closet here, nine foot by five foot, and right out into the bedroom if you'd like. You know what I'm saying? So that's everything, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button, it helps get these videos to people who need to see them. Thanks.